In this video, we will delve into basically everything that exists within the settings gear in the upper right hand corner. When you click on it, you get a couple different options. Uh, this, this is the display for comfortable, cozy, or compact. I really don't notice that much of a difference when I click on them. It gets a little bit spread out. Uh, I usually just stick with comfortable. It seems big enough to me. Uh, from here, you can do other things as well. You can get into the settings. You can get help on how to use different stuff. You can also get to the lab stuff. So we're going to get to settings first. And settings gives you four different uh, subheadings up here, general, calendars, mobile setup, and labs, which we'll also get to, which you can get to from that main gear. And the very first part is just the regular general settings, which have been English or whatever language you want it to be in, the time zones that it'll display, the date format and time format, if it's going to be military time or not, um, how it uses in, uh, different notifications, how it adds events from Gmail. If someone sends uh, you an email or an event or you send an event, how it shows up in your Gmail from there. And it gives you a whole bunch of different stuff here about working hours. Uh, so that way, if you send someone sends you an event and it's outside of your working hours, you have set up, it'll warn them that you are not actually working at that point. And then it gives you a couple other different view options and whether or not it's going to show the weather and stuff down here at the bottom. The important one is the calendars one, where this shows you every calendar that you were attached to at some point. So these are all the calendars that I have, and you'll notice that like, this is my regular Pensbury one. This is a Google Classroom one. Uh, this is birthdays. It's just automatically set up for pretty much everyone. And then it has a whole bunch of, for me at least, uh, Google Classroom calendars. Because each time you make Google, a Google Classroom, it creates a calendar for that class. That way, any of the events that you create in that Google Calendar or in that Google Classroom get filtered automatically to that calendar. So you can actually embed that calendar into a website. You can it's already attached to the Google Classroom, so you don't need to do that. Uh, but it allows people to be able to see any of the events that you've added, whether it be assignments or announcements, to that Google Classroom on a Google Calendar. And then underneath where it says other calendars is it's calendars that people have shared with you. Uh, so these are uh, different Google Classrooms that I've joined. And then that way I can see the events that they allow me. And I can show all of these in the list on the main page. This is where if I went back to calendars and if I had these different colored tiles on the left-hand side of them, if I didn't want to show them, I can then just click off and then that tile is now clear and it's the same thing as if i went into the settings option and calendars and i clicked off the show and list so anyone that i want to show in the list i'm going to leave checked anyone that i don't really want shown in the list i can then just check that off and then that way those events will not be shown on my side panel you can also edit any of the notifications from this screen and then share settings or unsubscribe entirely. So if someone shared a calendar with you that you don't want to even show up on your list, you can unsubscribe from that. And then that way that calendar doesn't even show up here. But for our sake, let's go to the, uh, let's go to this Google Fire Classroom one where I can go to shared settings. And from here, you can figure out who you're going to share this with. It'll tell you who it's already shared with at the very bottom. So it's, this is one is shared with any teachers in that Google Classroom. It's shared with me. And it says that I am the administrator of this, so I can make changes and I can manage this entire calendar. And then it's also shared with any teachers who are attached to that Google Calendar. And then from at the top, I can either share this with other people in general. I can share the calendar with everyone in Pensbury where they can see all of the event details or only that I'm free or busy for those events. I can make the calendar public so that way uh, people like parents could see it. So if you have a Google Classroom calendar, you might want to make it public so that way parents can have access to it. If it's on a Google Classroom, you might want to do that. And then you can also instead share it with just specific people. So if I wanted to share this with someone, I could type in their name, I can click on their name and then it will set it up so that way they can see any of the events. So I can come down here and I can see that they can see all event details. They can make changes to events. They can make changes and manage all the share settings. So that's basically as if they were the owner or that they can only see free or busy. 
And then that will send them an email telling them that the Google Calendar has been shared with them. And then if I want to remove them from this, I just hit that trash can and then they go away. So this allows you to share your calendar with as many people as you want. That means that any events that you create for that calendar also show up on theirs. So this is really important if you're working together as a part of a team that you might want to have everyone have access to who's available when, and this allows you to kind of find common meeting times rather easily. And we're gonna go, we're just gonna like save on that. And we're gonna go to labs as the last part. And labs is like the, ex the experimental Google uh, part where labs exists in a couple different places. It exists in calendars and it also exists in Gmail, where this is basically where there's things that people wanted to exist. So they coded them themselves and then Google kind of approved them. Uh, there's a major problem with labs is the fact that they could just like disappear at any time if Google wants to get rid of them or the developer, whoever it is that coded them and made them wants to get rid of them, they can. If they break, Google doesn't necessarily fix them. So you might not want to get too attached to any of these. Um, it's just really uh, random things that people thought they might want. Uh, like this one hides morning and night. So it'll, it'll only give you morning or night whenever it is that that time of the day is. Uh, this one will give you a background image. So if you want your uh, entire calendar to have an image behind it that you want to attach to make your calendar a little bit more fun, you can hit enable on that one and then set an image for it later on. And then one of the ones that I'm a big fan of is free or busy. So if I enable this, and what this says is give you a little, a little description, see which one of your friends are free or busy right now. So if you have a calendar that's shared with someone and you guys have your calendar shared together, it'll give you a list of who that is and then it'll tell you if they are currently free or busy. So instead of having to go into their calendar to check to see if they have an event, you can just click the on that little box and it'll tell you if that person is free or busy. And you can, uh, once you pick which ones of these you want enabled, you just hit save and then those things get added. So on the right hand side, anyone that I have calendar shared with would show up on this side under free or busy. And I can tell whether or not they are free or busy just by looking at that bar pretty quickly.